Your constituents, I guarantee we're you, claiming, I'd be willing to take a bet right now. They haven't, all, they haven't said we want Mr. you to address big cats. They've said General they want Mr. you to address prices. Gentleman reclaims his time. Mr. Chairman, the question is very specific if the gentleman still would like to yield. How much does he expect his amendment to lower gas prices? How many constituents at town hall meetings have asked you to address big cats and how many have told you that they want you to address energy prices? We're trying to help Mr. you Chairman, focus this committee's Chairman, agenda in our jurisdiction on Gentlemen, the priorities Chairman, of the American people. Gentlemen, you're talking time. about big cats right now. I can't even believe you're doing this. Chairman, you're talking about big time. cats. Mr. Graves, the gentleman reclaimed his time. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that. Yeah, you heard it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I just wanted to make it plain to the American people. Let's be upfront with the American people that voting yes on this amendment will do nothing for gas prices, voting no on this amendment will do nothing for gas prices, and this amendment has nothing to do with foreign nations because big cats have nothing to do with our reliance on foreign nations. The first president in modern history to not have lease sales. I had a conversation with the Secretary of Energy who came down to Louisiana recently. In my conversation with her, she says, I'm talking to her about leases, the fact that we need to offer up leases, new production areas. I don't know, how about in the United States versus Saudi Arabia, Iran, Venezuela, or other countries? You know what her response was? We don't need new sources of energy. Okay, let me ask you a question, Mr. Chairman. How is it that you don't need new sources of energy when our own president is going to Iran, Venezuela, Saudi Arabia, and others, and our own president is releasing oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve that's supposed to be for disasters, not disastrous policies? <laughs> Help me understand how you don't need new supply Whenever you're tapping foreign supplies and tapping our emergency reserves, putting us in a precarious or a dangerous situation, how can those two things coexist? Anybody? How can they coexist? This is the stupidest energy policy I've ever seen in my life. And, and I don't care who you are. If you're, if you're a hardcore liberal, you're a hardcore conservative. This is affecting every American. It's undermining our economy. We have the resources right here in the United States. Why aren't we producing it? This is absolutely idiotic, these policies that we're moving forward on. There was a Treasury official under the Biden administration who was quoted as saying it was their objective to raise energy prices. Rather than doing what this administration is doing, where they're shutting down the twin metals mine, shutting down the resources we need to deploy renewable energy in the United States, rather than what the, this administration is doing, we're just, what was that, yesterday or day before, the Biden administration comes out and says that we are actually going to eliminate tariffs for solar panels that are being transshipped from China. China right now manufactures 90% of the solar panels that are being sold around the world, 90%. You know what? We want solar energy too, where it makes sense, when it's economically sustainable and it's environmentally sustainable. This administration is not just going to other countries for oil and gas, they're going to other countries for renewable energy sources too, whether it's the critical minerals and the rare earths, or it's actually the production of things like wind turbines or things like solar panels. You can't make this stuff up. If we didn't learn our lesson that this administration committed to triple our dependence on Russian oil, now we're gonna go and say, hey, we're gonna get all of our solar panels from China? Which, which juveniles are running this place? This is crazy. We're going to go from one authoritarian regime to the other, and we're going to be dependent upon them and give them leverage over our economy and our national security. This isn't funny. This is serious stuff, and it's incredibly dangerous. Look, I make mistakes all the time, but I try to go back and acknowledge them and fix them. This administration keeps doubling and tripling down on the stupid decisions that have got us in this situation. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to, I'm going to actually say something that, that I don't think I've ever said before and I, I hope I never say again. Let's, in, let's take this moment. In, okay. In Thank this you. instance, I actually think I agree with Senator Schumer, Senator Markey, Senator Cantwell, and Senator Menendez. Let me explain. In a letter that they sent a while back, they said the current run-up in world energy prices is effectively a tax on every American family's discretionary budget except that the money goes to the OPEC cartel rather than the U.S. Treasury. Let me say it again. It's pretty rare that I actually agree with those senators, Senator Schumer, Senator Markey, Senator Cantwell, and Senator Menendez, but you know what? They got it right. This is a tax on the American people, and the profits are going to OPEC. They're not coming to the U.S. Treasury because this administration is blocking domestic energy production. 
Natural gas prices, as I recall, and I apologize, don't remember the latest number, uh, but I believe they've gone up about 300% since President Biden took office. 300%. The majority of our electricity comes from natural gas-fired power plants, and so therefore, uh, you're going to see a little bit of a lag in electricity prices because most often you have long-term contracts on natural gas. But as these contracts are renewed and the new prices are locked in, you are going to see skyrocketing electricity prices. So, so ladies and gentlemen, it is not limited to just gasoline and diesel. It, it, it is going to be electricity prices and they're coming. You're going to see doubling and tripling of electricity prices. One of our local TV stations, the cost of gas reached record, record highs in Louisiana. In March, it's only gotten worse. The price per gallon varies by 10 cents or more across capital, depending on the gas station. One of our HOMA newspaper, industry officials say jobs, economy, and tax revenue at state if Biden delays oil leases. The 9,000 permits and, and, and the impact that this is having, the National Marine Fisheries Service has to grant in order for uh, energy producers in the offshore to to, to be able to actually produce energy or to be able to do seismic surveys and things along those lines. These, these normally just take a few weeks, but National Marine Fisheries Service has delayed these things exponentially. And as a matter of fact, they, they recently came out, or I say recently in February, they came out and acknowledged that, quote, erroneous estimates resulted in miscalculated projections in the impact of activities in the Gulf of Mexico involving rarely sighted species. Let me give you an example. Maybe it was like um, this activity is going to impact walrus or uh, maybe, maybe polar bears that, that you may be shocked to learn we actually don't have in the, in the Gulf. And so it's another example of this administration, their mistakes that are, that are causing an impact and are delaying production of energy. This is, this is why they're, they're, even though we're at the highest percentage of permits that have, uh, that, that have ever been produced, that's why we're in this situation that, that we're in right now. So we do have, we do have an amendment. Amendment number four says that the bill cannot act, uh, restrict access to critical minerals on federal land or increase reliance on foreign nations with human rights issues. Mr. Chairman, the reason we've proposed this amendment, let me be clear, we fully support we fully support increased deployment of renewable energy, which needs to include solar and wind. It needs to include wave and geothermal. It needs to include hydro. It needs to include nuclear energy, including SMRs and next-gen nuclear. And it needs to include oil and gas because the Biden administration's own projections indicate that there's going to be a surge in oil and gas demand globally. Like I said, developing countries, nearly an 80% increase in demand moving forward.